G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video where I like to teach beginners how to paint beautiful, wonderful things in acrylic. Now today I'm going to do a painting and I've just been inspired by David Holfler. A very colourful painting and it's something a beginner can do, can grasp. And if you think you can't, it's just a matter of practicing procedures. Practice what I'm showing in this video because I know you can do it. There's the size of the canvas in inches and I will also get some colours running up the screen so you can write them down. But don't panic if you don't have the same colours as me, just grab something similar. Make the painting your own. I'm just showing you what you can paint, all right? So let's get right into it. So what we're going to have here is a horizon line about this high with some kind of slight mountains. We've got a, this is going to be water. So we've got a bit of side land coming here and the foreground cupping down there and it's going to be a beautiful tree up here. Now this view, we're sort of looking down it like that. We're not looking straight ahead, we're not looking up it, we're looking kind of down it. So that's the plane I'm looking for when I'm doing the horizon, this bit of side view land here. And it's going to have a wickedly wicked sky. Now on the palette I've got cerulean blue, Indian yellow, red violet, quinacridone red violet, I've got my craft paint and I've got some retarder. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do something a bit different with my retarder. Instead of mixing it with the white, so as I'm not polluting that all the time, if I've got enough left over, I'm going to use the retarder and paint the um, surface of the canvas where I want to go. And I'm going to paint the canvas with the retarder. Now it is a bit difficult for me to see, but I just want to try this, just to do something different, okay? All the way down to the waters where I want the water. So I've got the sky half. And the water half. Now it's probably going to take longer because now I've got to put the white on there. But we'll, I just want to see how this works. So now I'll pick up the white. Let me brush. And simply prime all that into the surface there. Now I'm just pushing it on any old way, left and right, big blobs and glubs, gunk, big blobs. Now I'm going and stroking it left and right, just to get all this, the bumps out. So it's a nice, smooth, even coat. Now I want to start with the Indian yellow, so I want to grab some of that and get right in the middle of the horizon line there. And my horizon line's about here, okay? So you get an idea where I want this band of yellow. Right in the guts, getting the brush sideways, if anything higher in the sky side. Just fading away there, and then bring it down into the water a bit as well. There we go, we've got some of that colour in the water. Now I want to wash this brush so I can add the violet. Now this violet looks strong but I'll be careful. We've got to mirror the top into the bottom of the painting. So I'm pulling some out, Not, I don't want it too thick on my brush. And we'll simply come across here, all the way across there. And then I want to bring this down into the yellow. I'm going to the tip of my putter on a brush now, just so I can really push those lines into the yellow like that. Whoa, I just went to that part of the brush, that's why that happened. I'll have to go back to some yellow there. And I want that violet just in the sky there. And also the same thing happening in the water. Just like that, all the way across. I'm gonna to have to pick up the yellow because I made a ubu there. So I'll wipe that brush, just wiping it. Oh, it's got a lot of that violet mixed with it now. It's okay. Now I'll fade it into that violet. So careful not to mix too much of that violet into your yellow because you could get a real darker colour. Just clean that brush. I want to get a bit more violet back down here, violety colour on its own, not mixed with the yellow, and the same up here. Get some more violet up there, there we go. On its own. 
When this dries a bit, I'm gonna add a bit more brighter yellow because that went a bit dark for me. But at the moment, we'll leave it for now. We'll continue with the blue. So grabbing the blue, I'll start from the top and bring it down to the violet. So coming up here, I'll get the blue in there, push it right across and then start bringing that down and, and meet the violet just like that. Meet the violet, come back into the blue, massage everything so you're happy with the colours. Now I'm going to the tip of that brush and I want to get that violet mixed with it. That violet's very strong, so be careful. Practice these procedures if you think it's going to be difficult for you. I'm picking up some more blue, just so I can come to the water after the painting. Come there. And meet it to the violet. I'll wipe what's on my brush, and I'll get that blended into the violet there. That's okay, because this is water. I want it really waterfied. And I'm going to pick up a little bit more blue because this is the shoreline. So if anything, I might want that a bit darker blue. So we'll just simply allocate the darkness there, maybe with a little bit of violet to make that happen as well. There we go. Now back to that yellow in the middle. I've got a little bit of white just pumped in it as well to brighten it up a bit because on its own it's very see through -y and dark in colour. There we go, that white helped it that right across. Yeah, beautiful, it's white, it's open, it's bright, that's, where I, that's how I wanted it. Just down there, don't go any further. Nicely done. So I've marked here and here, that's the horizon line, so just below that, I want to get some dark shadowing onto the water surface, so I'm picking up some of the cerulean blue and I want to slightly Tone it with some grey, get some grey in there. So I'm going to use my bullshit stick and this stuff is pretty much all across, leaving a gap. See I'm resting on my bullshit stick and painting it out and this is all kind of here. I can stamp that on because this paint is still wet. I'll show you what I mean. I want it from my horizon line, I want a bit of yellow before it comes into this. You'll see what I mean as it plays out. Keep all this straight. Keep it straight. This is just bands of reflections on the water. I'm gonna pull that just with one stroke from the edge into the middle of the painting, just like that, because the, there we go, it's still wet. That'll do. Now what I can do is dry this, and now I want to finish that off, so I'm just going to stamp it on like so. I want that there. I want this coming down there. Just stamp it on. Just bands of it in cahoots with the horizon line. You'll see what this stuff does. Leave some of the hollow bits there and solid it up a bit. I'm just stamping it on so I can control how it's coming from the brush onto the canvas. And on the other side, we're gonna put a hint of, uh, where are we, over here? We're gonna put a hint of the um, violet in there on top of these ones. So this is just under the horizon line there. Getting some of that craft white and just tainting it with some of the red violet there, just like that. And we're just gonna sit this on the right hand side. So from about this side, let me just test it on that side there. And we're just going to Simply get some violety colours over this side. Got that blue colour here underneath it. And I want to get a bit on its own just scooting out here. 
that's it. Leave it alone. Don't muck with it too much. You'll turn it into snot. Now the next colour I want to be is burnt umber, but I want it to be dark burnt umber. So I'm going to get some burnt umber and then slowly add a little bit of black in it so it's a blackish brown burnt umber, okay? Because the sun's sort of gone down over the horizon, so whatever's there is in silhouette kind of thing. Hello Tessa and Jenna, how you doing? Now, I'm going to simply grab my bullshit stick. Now it's important to keep some yellow between this and that blue that we just put on the water there, alright? So I want to get this and I want to go roughly, I'm going to start at the bottom first, come all the way along here. Now this is going to get my horizon line straight and if it's too high I can gingerly creep it down. Look at that. That's why I call it a bullshit stick, because that straight line is just simply bullshit. How'd you get it so straight? It's, you can't do that freehand. It's amazing, and I'm quite happy the way that happened. Now, I will thicken this up a bit off that line there, and then I'll grab my filbert, and then we'll dress this up. Pick up my appropriate filbert. From about the middle, we'll kind of bring trees out as I always say leave some windows and canopy tops there like that and we're simply now blocking this into the shape and the height that we want that's the color I want and it's coming higher off the edge of the canvas in general 95% of your horizons mountains and that sometimes it's not called for but in general 95% of them haven't come in higher off the canvas. Don't have them coming down off the canvas, okay? Like so. It can go up and down wherever, but as soon as you get to the edge of the canvas, it's always good practice, 95% of the time to go, whoops, we better come up and off, bang. It's just more pleasing to the edge of the painting. Now while we have that colour going, from about, see your horizon to about there, where are we, about there, boom. I'm going to map in just with dots, so I want to come out to about this far, there's a dot there, and I want to bring that in a roundabout way coming around, so if anything it's coming around like that off the painting. And then this can be kind of shaped up there, just like that, okay. Now I'm going to map that in, there we go, shrubs and land mass right there, so I'll block it in, okay that's done, and I'm going to grab a deer foot which is going to help just get some sticky bits out on top of this like so, I'll show you, uh, let's try it there first and then start getting some stuff just there, a bit solid on the mass there, something breaking out over there, there we go, a bit solid off the mass, and a bit more again, something here, a bit solid off the mass, and then come out like this. These deer foot makes beautiful little distant shrubs, okay, something like that. And then the same, hang on, I'll get something kind of here, Now I want to do the same, we've got to get this here solid and then pull down for the reflection of this down here, okay? I'm just putting it on and pulling it down, bit solid there, pull down some bits and now this one I'm kind of creating his shadow in there. Now see where this is meeting that, see you could sort of see a line, that's what I mean by solid it in, just kind of, there we go, weld it together. You're an artist, you look for these things that make you feel your painting can look better from doing it. Okay, I can probably get some longer ones in there too because reflections can be distorted. I'm going to have a bit of a branch coming out there so we'll put his reflection in there as well. So grabbing that burnt umber on a liner brush get any little branches in here that's making up this foliage 
okay just like that there can be a bit more on the darker side if you want like that should pop out more yeah and we're going to have some nice and thin look at this right up there Just something connecting it. We're going to have something really venturing out. So he's coming right off the painting on, right out into there. Come a bit fatter as you come onto this land here. And these are just simple little lines, but they're just going to have so much wow to your painting there. As thin as you can go, practice these little little buggers. And they come there like that. Now uh, we could probably have something here. I'm just blurring the underneath of it with this. So I'm putting whatever I want there. Blurring the underneath. Just like that. It's very simple. Take a lot of the paint off the brush before you blur it, otherwise you're going to keep making a bigger blob than what you want. That's why you saw me go over here and do that, because I had too much paint on the brush. That's meeting the water. And we might have a little, nice skinny bit of a twig growing on something here as well, like so. over the water there and then you want to just kind of <laughs> scratch that in and see this one I haven't got much paint on the brush You got I want to sc scratch that in Just like so. And if there's anything that might need to be put in there, you can just do this. Now that's done, but if you want to do this, and what I mean by this, there's the paint there. I'm just getting most of it out of, say, this brush. I'm going to grab some of the craft white and just get a tinted value of that. And you can, if you want, put some kind of aspects of dimension in there that's just if you want to it's just something you can do if you want now just to finish the water here you go. I've just grabbed some glaze and I've rubbed some glaze over the water here sorry the camera was off and I thought it was on just across the water like this just to sink down reflections and then put some white against the edge of this little island just so you can see where the island is above the water and under the water there and you can probably just put some sliders over those reflections just to sink them down not too much we don't want to make it big and loud okay traveling along quite well if you're enjoying the video so far give me the thumbs up share and subscribe and be sure to hit that notification bell now we're going to put the foreground in and this magnificent tree right in front of the painting that's going to make the whole thing pop. So I'm going to mix up the burnt umber and the black again but I don't want it to be black I want it that brownie black and we're simply going to start mapping this in so what I want to do is get it to the water it can be scratchy and a bit hairy up there don't worry just get this coming around like so all the way there covering those little bits that weren't painted in now you can grab it and paint it like a champion and just block it in now this lower part here when I added the retarder and that white craft paint I didn't put any here why not because if I did when I'm brushing this now it's going to be ripping it up and turning it into snot and be really frustrated so there we go we've got that roughly cut in there now what I want to do is take some of it off the brush and kind of get some see if I can get some hairy bits in there like so a hog bristle fan brush so we'll just get some of this 
there we go, just pulled up here and there, just in front of the foreground, just like that, this way and that way, all over the place. And then we can put some, let's grab this on its edge, put like some kind of dingly bits like that, there's a dingly bit there, there's a bigger dingly bit there, just something dingle dangling along there like that. That's beautiful, simple, effective and artistic. And it's going to be darker in front of that reflections in the water there. And we can probably put some dingly bits here. Make that a fatter dingly bit because it looked a bit stupid there. Okay, something here scratching up and something here scratching up as well. Dingly bits there. I don't know what they are, but um, they look all right. And what I'm going to do, oh, too much paint. And what I'm going to do, get some of that off there, is um, put some leaves on there as well, just to fascinate it. Grab an appropriate round brush, just so as I can get, just kind of some leaf action here on some of this stuff just to break it up a bit. Uh, we'll get some over here. Well, why are you putting some there for, Ian? Because I can't help myself. Just simple, something just to break it up. I'm gonna have the tree right in front of that bit there. I've given that a bit of a dry, but what I wanna do is grab a bit of white I've got some there, and grab some of that colour and just whitalise it, all right? Just like that. Whitalise it, in my book, means you're putting white in it. Because where my tree's going to go, I want a bit of... Now let's get some of this back up there. My tree's going to be here, so I want to just scrumble some lighter values there to sit the tree now you don't have to do this if you don't want, if you want yours all dark, that's fine. So I'm just softly scratching this around with my hog bristle fan brush. There we go, that'll do. That will do. See how we've just got a little bit of light cascading in there. Now we've got that brownie black again, and we're gonna map in our trees. So I'm grabbing more brown and black mixed together. <coughs> now I want a couple of brushes here. Where's a good round? Good flat will do chisel him up. Now I want to come from here and about here. That's the that's the width of the base. This is a simple way so you don't feel nervous and go, oh, how am I going to go? Now I want to bring the tree up to about here. There. Okay, we have our main branches blocked in. Now I'm grabbing a liner brush and I want to just simply now add from the tree just some smaller branches and get them coming across stuff, okay? Like that, and make these nice and sharp as well. And these are just all the little gap filler bits. Now we'll just get some, I'm just kind of looking here, get some branches coming down. See, when you bring some down, they look like they're going way out. Boom. Crossover, bang. Right off the painting there. Right up here. Crossover. So what I'll do with the magic of television video again, I'm going to make some more of these up, okay? Okay, I've finished putting all the rest of the main twigs and branches in there. Now I'm going to grab my deer foot again, and I want to load it up. 
so as I get dotty things like that. I don't want to load it up so I get blobs like that, all right? Practice just getting those sort of brush strokes. Now, I think I'll start from the bottom. The bottom's going to be a little bit soft and fluttery and weak, but then it's going to start intensifying as we get to the top. So we will start from there and we'll simply start loading some of this onto those twigs, making out what they're holding. There's bits of stuff here in the water there and there. Nothing too much there. Load it up, nice and lightly hit this. I'm twisting my brush as I go. Why? Just so as I don't get repetitive stamp marks. I mean, that looked all right, didn't it? But sometimes you'll get repetitive stamp marks and you don't want that. That's why I turn the brush around and twist it and manipulate it the way I want. And then we will make bits thicker again. But I want this coming all the way up the painting. Oh, look at that, a bit heavy. Luckily, this is the top because the top's going to be a bit heavy. They're coming all the way there, coming off the painting here. And these are just making thousands and thousands upon thousands of artistically painted leaves wouldn't you say? So I'm gonna start real heavy in this corner here and then slowly lighten it up because the corners are always darker and solid. And work off each branch. So there's some there, I'm clustering it up, making them my own and they'll overlap each other in their own way and make up for the rest of the painting. All right, so let me finish doing this. I want some heaviness around here just to make up for the tree. Like, watch this. Heaviness there, still dotty but heavier. Still dotty but heavier. Let's say here, a bit more heavier there, coming off those branches. And see all the lines and twigs in that? They're there, they're done. We've got them done before. I'm making some more solid bits there. Um, let's say here. Now I'm just going to sign this and then we'll whack a frame on it. So I like to thank all my patrons for supporting me every month. Links in the description below. Become a patron. Get behind the scenes and extra goodies there as a patron. All my videos do cost you nothing to watch. So if you ever like to send some support, it's always much appreciated. All right, and we'll put Steve's little paw print on that. Okay, let's whack a frame on that and see how that looks. Oh yeah, that's not too shabby, is it? Nice, colorful, kind of like a rainbow background of a tree, a silhouetted tree. I've got to come up with something, but it's a beautiful looking piece of art, and I know you can do it. Well, I must say I had a lot of fun, and that's a very colorful, doable painting. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. And remember to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if I've offended you in any way, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.